Hello, today we are going to discuss data partition. Data is everything. Data means business, right? Whenever you are building an application or uh, doing a system design or even an interview, your data strategy is the most important thing, right? That is where the knowledge of data partitioning comes in handy and is often the make or break uh, that basically decides the continued success of your application, right? So what is data partition? Data partitioning basically is dividing a large set of data, large data set into physically separate and independent data stores, right? So you have a your main database and then you are segregating that data into physically separate independent databases or data stores. That is data partitioning. Now, why and when do you, should you do data uh, partitioning, right? So let's look at the why first. First of all, it improves availability, right? Whenever you are separating the data across multiple servers, it uh, avoids any single point of failure, right? If one instance fails, uh, only the data in that partition is unavailable, right? Operations on the other partitions can continue, right? Uh, next is it improves performance. Yes, data access operations on each partition take place over a small volume of data, right? So if it is correctly done, the partition can make your system much more efficient, right? It improves scalability. When you scale up a single database, right, uh, it will eventually reach the, the physical limits of the hardware, right? Uh, if you divide the data across multiple partitions, each hosted, uh, each partition that is hosted on a separate server, you can scale them up independently and indefinitely without touching your main database, right? It provides operational flexibility, right? Partitioning uh, offers many opportunities for fine-tuning fine your uh, your operations, you're maximizing administrative efficiency, right? You can minimize cost. So uh, there is a lot of operational benefits and it increases security, right? Uh, like in some cases, you can have separate sensitive and non-sensitive data in different partitions, right? And apply different kinds of security controls on that sensitive data only, right? So that is the why. But when should you do it? When your table is too large, yes, you should partition them into smaller databases when it is blocking readers and writers because the database is too large. Uh, in terms of scaling, like we mentioned, if you want to scale your system, uh, it is better to scale a single partition instead of one huge database because obviously it is going to uh, reach your physical limits, right? So if you want to scale, it's better that you partition the data and you can also add more partitions as and when needed, not only uh, uh, horizontally uh, not only vertically scaling but also horizontally scaling right you can add more partitions or you can increase the physical limit of one partition right so that is uh, when you can do data partitioning when it's a multi-tenant system so multi-tenant systems many applications when you build uh, in the real world are multi-tenant which basically means there are multiple customers who are using your your data right your application uh, there might be certain strategies where you might want your application customers from say North America to be on one partition and in Asia to be on another partition, right? Based on geogra geographic lo locations. Or you can also have a single partition for every Excel customer, for example, right? So there can be various use cases for uh, when you should be do data partitioning when you are doing a multi-tenant system. Uh, it improves overall health, like we uh, discussed, it improves operation flexibility. And uh, also when you want to tune queries, right? Uh, like we mentioned, it, it improves performance. So data access operations. Uh, when you are doing on a, on a small volume of data, it, you, your queries can be much more faster. Instead of when you are doing on a large single database, your queries might be slow. And not everything can also be served from one database. So to mix and match and to you know uh, slice and dice the data for your uh, specific application needs, you might need certain kind of separate kind of uh, data strategy, right, which can be moved to a separate partition and your queries can be tuned on that, that partition itself instead of touching the main database. So that's when you should be doing uh, data partitioning. Now let's look at what are the methods of uh, data partitioning. First method, and that's the most uh, famous method, is the horizontal partitioning. Horizontal partitioning means you are partitioning based on a, the values of a key right, of a probably a partition key, right, that is what is also called sharding. You might have heard what is data sharding, that is also called data sharding. So if we take a look at a sample database and how will we do horizontal partitioning. So if you look at this database, it's a database which has, which has multiple columns and say order ID is one of your keys, right. Here we are doing a 
horizontal partitioning based on the key right uh, right whatever is the value on the key so if you see we have partitioned uh, order ids which are starting uh, with letters a to m are going to partition one and order ids which are uh, uh, have n to z order ids which are starting from n to z are going to partition two right so it is it is horizontally partitioning so all the uh, uh, columns uh, are maintained right and we are mainly partitioning by rows so that is horizontal partition uh, there are benefits yes it is simple all partitions have the same schema like we mentioned as the original database right but it is also has some drawbacks uh, because it can be an uneven distribution of data right uh, because if you are doing say your order id instead of if order id if you are doing by name right for example or say uh, uh, say age or something like that for example if you you might not have many people starting with the uh, letter x as name right so if you're partitioning based on key values it might be unevenly distributed so uh, name starting with a or say s might be very skewed but name starting with x or z might be might not be that many data right so it is unevenly distributed and one partition may experience heavier load if obviously if the partition has more data like we talked about it because of the uneven distribution then obviously your queries on that partition will also be slower because there can be much more load your queries for a record with a name starting from a might be much more than with a record uh, starting with a name having uh, the starting character as x right so that's horizontal partitioning also known as sharding right the next type of data partitioning is vertical partitioning so vertical partitioning means you are partitioning based on columns which is also called normalization right so if you take a look at the same database and here what we have done is we have uh, partitioned based on columns right so if you see partition one contains order id item name quantity price uh, but partition two contains order id order date and estimated delivery date right so your order id is the key and you are partitioning based on the columns right you are basically doing a normalization uh, it is straightforward we know normalization is pretty straightforward and it is supported in multiple Databases obviously it is very easy to do. Uh, it is useful for segregating hot and versus cold data. Uh, like for example, your data on top of which you are mostly your users are requesting are called hot data, but keys or columns which is not used very much, probably say metadata or some kind of uh, 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 data which is not regularly used can be cold data, right? So you can partition the columns based on hot and cold data. Uh, you can store different types of data in separate partitions, right? So uh, whatever is the requirement based on your application you can store it differently but there are certain drawbacks also uh, with with growth in data uh, uh, there might be further partitioning required right you might have a uh, partition one but now you might want to again create another partition of only quantity and price based on order id right if you want to have some kind of a metric going and some kind of analytics like how many orders are coming and what is the price value uh, of a cumulative price value that we are getting you might want to do that right so it is possible that you might want to partition further uh, joins or combining multiple partitions right uh, to provide one one aggregated uh, analytics or aggregated meaning of the data might be difficult right because obviously it can be expensive to query multiple partitions to gather one one response so those are the drawbacks uh, what are the other methods of data partitioning uh, another method is functional partition functional partitioning is partition based on service dependency like context right for example you might want a product catalog and a billing data in separate partitions right you might want uh, user information and uh, payment uh, uh, information in separate databases right which is uh, which is based on your function or your application context right another type of uh, method of data partitioning is directory based partitioning and which is something that uh, i have personally also built and it is used when you have a huge database and you are particularly building say analytical systems or kind of uh, structured data or kind of metrics and all uh, like for example what it does you have a lookup service which basically keeps a mapping between the actual data record key right to the db server where the data is stored right uh, so basically that means that your application is going to only talk to this directory service to figure out what is the uh, partition where it is stored based on the key right it's just a mapping directory and then that will fetch the data and give it back so your your application code it basically abstracts the 
database layer access code so that is also very useful uh, these approaches are combination of horizontal and partition uh, vertical partitioning strategies right now let's look at what are the partitioning criteria right first criteria is a round robin partition right where you have a uniform data distribution for example if we have this is our, our uh, database partitions so the data can be look at partitions one two and three and how the data can be stored right first the data is going to partition one then partition two then partition three right then it will again go to partition one uh, go to partition two go to partition three right so it is in a round robin fashion it is basically giving all the partitions equally uh, uh, transforming the data tra transferring the data and uh, if the partitions end it will again start from the first from the beginning of the partitions right the next one is list partition list partitioning is selected based on a list of values right so say you have this partition say in partition one you want to store uh, data from all regions in usa right new york florida right so that is your list uh, partition two you might want to have all data from india right uh, like delhi kolkata chennai other places right so those are all list of places so you're partitioning best based on uh, list of values right? the third partitioning technique is hash based partitioning which is also one of the most popular partitioning techniques uh, and a criteria also like a hash function is applied to a key attribute to determine the partition right so uh, uh, say this is your database you ha might have your hash one uh, going to partition one hash three going to partition two and hash two going to partition three so depending on how your hash function is divided right for example uh, hashing by the first two digits of a zip code right might produce 100 200 in some hundreds of partitions right uh, that's not uh, very large generally whenever you are designing an application you should have a huge amount of partitions uh, and your partitioning key should be selected in a way that a lot of partitions can be created basically say if you have a database which contains 100 records if you just have a partition which produces two uh, you, you have a partition key which produces two partitions then it is not exactly improving the performance right it part each partition will roughly contain 50 records right it's roughly the same right like for example if you have a partition key with values such as uh, yes no right or true false right or male female right those kind of partition like hash key choices are not very good rather you should have your hash based partitioning technique the key should be very uh, it should be uh, should not should not be very uh, the cardinality of the of the hash key uh, should be huge like it should be able to create a lot of partitions so hash based partitioning is also uh, one of the most used uh, hash key fields yes like i mentioned should create a large number of partitions right uh, the next uh, criteria is range based partitioning so range based partitioning is data is partitioned uh, based on key column values within a specific range right so say you have user records right in a database and you might want to partition based on uh, the range of age right so you have age uh, users from age 0 to 18 going into partition 1 users from uh, age 19 to 50 going to partition 2 and users from age 50 to 80 say for example going to partition 3 right so you can have a range based partition technique now the final partitioning technique is composite partitioning which is basically uh, it is partitioning the data using two or more other partitioning techniques or criteria that we saw before right for example uh, say you uh, have uh, you have partition based on age and also partition based on region right uh, so which is basically a composite list range partition so you want your users in usa uh, coming from say new york florida or any kind of usa uh, states within the age of 0 to 18 might go to partition 1 right users from the age of 19 to 50 uh, from any states in india are going to partition 2 right so that's one type of partition right it's a composite partition and similarly you can have composite partitioning on a variety of uh, scenarios you can have hash list range range list list so there can be various permutation combinations of how you want to partition your, uh, your data depending on what criteria you choose right
Now, what are the considerations for partitioning? So, partitioning, whenever you are doing data partitioning, it's a it's a it's a big decision, right? Uh, you already have the data, you are partitioning the data for obviously doing some kind of benefit or scaling or high availability, right? Or increasing security. So, it's a big decision. So, one of the things like there are few key considerations that you should keep in mind whenever you are doing data partitioning. First of all, your application consideration, right? Data partitioning, like I mentioned, uh, it is a big decision and it adds a lot of design complexity, right? So you should check your query, access, your requirements, right? Read, write requirements. So you should be able to know what your requirement is before you start the, part, uh, the data partitioning. Otherwise, if you're not clear of how to do the partition, and how to retrieve the data or access the data going down the line, then that can be a, a possible nightmare, right? So you might want to be very careful there. Rebalancing partition, partitions is a big problem, right? As your traffic goes uh, grows, your partition strategy may need to be modified, right? Or you might need a new strategy, uh, which might be required to be implemented, right? Now that can also require data migration, right? So uh, that is a that is a challenge when it becomes like you partition today does not mean it's not uh, a, a long lasting like solved for eternity kind of a solution right it's always a continued improvement process uh, whenever you are doing a partition it might serve you for a few weeks depending on your scale to few years to few few decades right who knows but definitely you might have to repartition your data and repartition your partitions also and so your strategy and your techniques might change right so that is one of the considerations that you should keep in mind so basically you should do trade-offs when you are you're doing the designs uh, the final is referential integrity right so enforcing any data integrity constraints uh, in partition databases uh, can be very difficult right for example uh, any relational databases right they, they do not support foreign key constraints right across databases on different database servers right different partitions this means basically the application that requires referential integrity on partition databases uh, most likely will have to enforce it in the application code by writing the code right the database is not going to provide that on uh, uh, off the shelf right so uh, in some of these those cases the applications run regular sql jobs right to clean up dangling references so uh, clean up any data that is not used right so those can also be some challenges so you should be considering that also so that was data partitioning hopefully it was useful